Hello folks and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be doing a review of a water cooling kit, specifically this Thermaltake C360 DDC. Now obviously water cooling has become quite a bit more popular recently and we've got a lot of content on the more custom aspects of it such as making distro plates but also the tutorials for bending tubes and how to like plan your runs, that sort of thing. Now a good way of getting into water cooling is by using a kit such as one of these. The handy thing about a kit is that they basically come ready to run, featuring all the components that you need to get a loop going. Now that doesn't mean every single loop, as you notice there's no GPU block in this kit, so if you wanted to water cool your graphics card you're going to have to buy a separate block and additional fittings for that, but they're a good starting point if you just want to go with the CPU, and then if you're not entirely sure which parts you're going to need, you, this is going to make sure that everything is going to be compatible. Now. The other advantage is that by buying into a whole ecosystem all in one go and not having to worry about individual little components, you can also get quite a saving. So we're going to be taking a look at the pricing later on for this particular kit, but quite often the kits have quite a markdown compared with the individual component prices. So if it's not absolutely crucial that you need to buy every single component individually, maybe from different manufacturers for instance, then actually going with the kit can be quite a good idea to be able to save a little bit of cash. So in terms of the kit we've got here today, this particular model sits sort of fairly near the top of the stack in Thermaltake's range, and it features a bunch of premium offerings such as a proper DDC pump, which is always important to have a good DDC or a D5 pump in my opinion, along with a copper radiator. So in our previous ones used to have aluminium, we're back to copper the way it should be, and that's a very good thing. So we're gonna be taking a look now what's inside this kit, what it comes with, and how it's all gonna to fit together. So in terms of what we get in the kit itself, you're going to get the 360mm thin copper radiator, uh, three fans, you get six C-Pro fittings, your CPU water block, two angled adapters, these are 90 degree ones, four meters of 16mm PTG tubing, and then a bunch of adapters, the uh, pump res itself, and a litre of coolant plus a fill bottle. Now, one of the things that I wasn't expecting that you also get is a silicon bending rod. Now, this is quite a small one, but it's nice to see that this is included so that you can do your bending if you don't actually have a full-on kit. Now, it's worth mentioning, of course, if you want to bend your tubes, you are still going to need the other parts that go with that, such as a device for cutting your tubing to length, such as a saw or a pipe cutter. You're also going to need a heat gun to be able to do the bending itself, and I also recommend following the other steps, such as lubricating your rod and making sure that it doesn't stick, and all the other steps that we can find in our How to Bend Rigid Tubing Guide. Now, taking a look at the individual components, so what we've got here is a thin 360 millimeter copper radiator. Now, personally, 360 is probably the best starting point for a kit, in my opinion. You can obviously find 240mm ones, but below 360, you're very much in the same sort of cooling potential as all-in-one coolers. So I would suggest, if you're able to, try fitting in a 360 or even bigger, or maybe a 360 plus another one. One of the handy things about the kits is that you can use more than one radiator, which you can't do with an all-in-one. So if your case is capable of fitting more than one radiator, I definitely suggest it, but just remember you need to buy the extra fittings as well. Now I've not seen this pump res unit before in person, but it's a little DDC unit. Now the cool thing about DDCs is that they take up much less room. So if you've got a smaller chassis, that's gonna be quite handy. The trade-off is that sometimes they can be a little bit louder than say a D5, which you've seen me use in a lot of previous videos. Um, but all in all, they are reliable and they're very powerful. Actually, one of these can push probably any configuration you're likely to use. So you have to go really quite to the extremes for a DDC not to be powerful enough. And one of the things that is definitely worth noting about it is that if you look on the side here, it does say that it's made by Xylem, so it's a proper DDC. It's not one of those knockoffs which are making their way into the market from China. So you just gotta make sure you're careful if you're looking at any of those, you want to get a genuine pump. Another nice little detail is that they do have a bridging plug for when you're filling the system, and that's a nice little thing because it's quite easy to forget that you need to do this, uh, because otherwise your power supply is just not going to run. 
In terms of this kit maybe being enough, I would suggest if you're new to water cooling and you're going to be bending your tubes, you probably want to buy more tubing than this. So four meters is very much enough, you can use it, but one issue is that these are only 0.5 millimeter lengths. So some manufacturers only do 0.5 millimeters. Thermaltake does do one meter sections, and personally, those are the ones that I would pick up if you're going to be buying some more tubing if you're worried about this not being enough. The issue with 0.5 meters is that quite often your bends might be somewhere in the middle of the tube over here, and you're gonna be trimming to size, and then with a 0.5 meter tube, you're basically not going to get another attempt on this length of tubing. So if you make a mistake, say you get your angle slightly wrong over here, maybe, this tube might just end up being wasted. Whereas if you had a one meter length, you might be able to get an extra piece of, uh, of workable tubing out of that bend. So that's why I prefer to use the one meter tubes. But you still get four meters of it, so you've got a bit of room for error. And of course, if you've got much larger sassy, then you're probably gonna to wanna to use the one meter ones anyway, because trying to do uh, a bend like that in some giant full ATX case is gonna be quite difficult without the extra room on either side. In addition to the tubing, I would also recommend getting a few more fittings just off the bat. So this is enough for the um, actual tubes themselves, but things like the angled adapters, quite often you'll find that your hardware doesn't line up as much as you want. And whilst bending is obviously very a very good way of getting around that, having angled adapters is also incredibly convenient. So I would personally recommend maybe picking up two more, or if you're worried about certain angles, maybe some things like rotary snake fittings, or some angled adapters like 45 degrees or 30 degrees if you think things aren't going to line up. It's better to have too many or than too few because if you find you haven't got enough, you're either gonna burn through an awful lot of tubing doing complicated bends, or you're gonna just have to sit and wait for ages for your new fittings to arrive and pay the shipping on those. So to test this kit out, we're going to be putting it inside our cooler test rig from the office, and that has a X299 18 core CPU in it, so that's going to be belting out an awful lot of heat. That should basically give some room for this radiator and the CPU block to do their job, and we'll see exactly how well they perform. So I've now finished installing the kit into the chassis itself, and it was really quite a simple experience, um, actually. The kit came together quite well. Um, it would have been nice maybe if we had a few more angled adapters. I've had to do a few compound bends in there to get it going, and a couple of them aren't quite as aesthetic as I'd like, just because we don't have the time to experiment with hundreds of different varieties of, of tubing runs. But it does all kind of work together, and I'm very happy with how it runs. We're gonna be doing some proper thermal testing in a moment in the labs, so stay tuned for that. But in terms of how we've sort of decided to route things, um, obviously we've got the pump res on the front over here, and then that goes straight into the radiator, feeds from the radiator to the CPU block, and then comes straight back out, back into the reservoir. Now I've got a couple different thoughts on some of the components themselves. Now it's worth noting that they use the C-Pro fittings, which are actually my favorite rigid compression fittings. And the reason for that is because they have like a flat base to them. Now, most of the uh, fittings on the market make use of like a socket that you stick your tube into. Now, the problem with that is if you've got very tight bends or you've got, say, components at 90 degrees like that to one another, trying to insert tubes, especially 16 millimeter tubes, is incredibly difficult. Now, because the, the bases of the C-Pros are completely flat, actually, that's not a problem at all. The issue, of course, is that they are huge. So if you have uh, a rig, maybe an ITX rig, or something which you just are very, very kind of tight, um, tight fitting, you possibly will have issues trying to fit them and some of the older blocks on the market out there won't fit them. But of course, if you're going with a kit, that won't matter at all. The other thing that I'm not quite so hot on is the way that the uh, pump res works. So obviously being a full DDC, it's very, very powerful, but this one doesn't have PWM control. So the extra fan cable that comes out of there is just the tachometer so you can see how high it's actually running. You have to use voltage control on one of these ones. So natively, if you're just plugging it into Molex, it's gonna be running at 12 volts and at 
Now that does mean it's going to be a little bit whiny inside your chassis when you're in like a quieter room. You won't be able to pick it up here in the workshop because we've got the doors open and obviously it's not the same kind of space. But in a bedroom, you will hear a, a, a DDC pump going at full whack. So I'd have preferred maybe a PWM option, but there may also be different versions that you can pick up in place of that one. So whilst this kit has, a, has the uh, standard, you could always maybe buy a different one later on if you found you didn't want it, or you could buy a voltage controller or use it through a fan controller. Um, the other thing that maybe I find a little bit uh, difficult is bleeding this system. So normally you have an anti-vortex um, sort of fitting or a device that sits inside the reservoir and stops the bubbles from going from the outlet back into the pump itself. Um, this one has a, like a very shallow system at the bottom instead of like a large one. And because of that, we found it took about maybe an hour or so to get, all, get the majority of the bubbles out. And now this is a very simple loop. And I've also made sure that the radiator has the port spacing up. So naturally the bubbles will flow out of it. But if you've maybe got a different orientation, it might take a bit longer. And bear in mind that you want to make sure that all the air is out of the system before you use it intensively, because it's going to affect your thermals. So having lots of bubbles in the loop is gonna mean that the CPU block is not gonna cool as well. And especially if you have a GPU block, you wanna make sure that those bubbles are out of there. Now, I did say that I'd prefer to have a few more angled adapters, um, but it is of course completely possible to work with the ones that came in the kit, as I've done here. So I've tried to make sure that I've only used the same number of fittings that you get in the kit at stock. Now, it's actually nice that they've included some angled adapters at all in the kit, because they don't really have to. Technically, all you need to be able to complete the system is to be able to have enough fittings to fit into all the components. So having two angled adapters is in fact a nice touch. On top of that, I would definitely recommend though getting a few extra and trying to plan out your loop as much as possible before you make any purchases because it does make it difficult if you have to keep going back and fixing things. Now remember, we do also have a guide on how to plan your tubing routes. So if you do happen to have your case already, I definitely suggest starting with the, the hardware already in your PC before you get everything else then you can plan it and have a good idea as to what you're going to need to get. So I also mentioned earlier that a kit is a great way of saving a bit of money on your water cooling experience. Now, this particular kit goes for about £325, and if you were looking to purchase all these exact components individually, you're actually looking at a figure closer to sort of £460. So that's actually quite a substantial saving. Now you can easily put that into getting a GPU block and some extra fittings, for instance. So getting a kit like this would allow you to cool your GPU for the same price as buying just the CPU stuff alone. Another handy little feature is that this kit comes with a manual controller for all of the RGB in it. So you don't have to rely on using software control like some of the other products, just to be able to get everything running the way you want it to. And that's quite a bonus, especially if you're maybe going to have your system uh, changing out quite a lot, because I found software control can be a little bit flaky at the best of times. So it's quite handy that you can just plug all your devices into a little controller and then just set it to what you want. With that all said and done, we're now going to take this over to the labs and Matt will take over and do some proper thermal benching to see exactly how well this kit performs. So the system has survived the trip to the studio and that means we can get on with the thermal testing. Now, as Alex mentioned, we're using our standard X299 cooler testing hardware. Now, ordinarily, we would test coolers on three different platforms, including LJ1151 and AMD AM4, but it's not really practical to do that with a hardline kit, so we're going to focus on the most demanding one, which is X299. Inside, we have an Intel Core i9-7980XE, an 18-core CPU, and we've overclocked all cores to 4 GHz using a V-core of 1.1 volts and this is going to keep the power and heat output constant when we apply our load, which we leave running for 15 minutes. While the core hardware is the same as our usual test setup, we have transplanted it into a new case, mainly because it looks new, but also it gives us a chance to play with the airflow at the front. Now many of you may have been wondering why on earth we built a radiator with an intake fans right behind a completely sealed door, and it is actually for this reason. So when we open the door, this gives us the chance to replicate a case with a mesh front, which is like the best case scenario for airflow. And when we close the door, we can also test the airflow in a very bad situation and let us test the range of performance on the kit. So to do that, we're gonna test the kit in five different scenarios. We're gonna first do it with the door open, and this is gonna be done with 12 volt, seven volt, and five volt fans. We're also gonna test it with the door closed using 12 volt and five volt fans. And I should also mention that the pump is running in all of these tests at 12 volts because, as Alex mentioned, it's not a PWM1 and you cannot vary its speed without voltage control. 
in the rest of the system, we have two exhaust fans, and I've turned these off just for the sake of the microphone at the moment. But we have one in the roof, which I've installed, because without it, the BRMs were overheating, and this was affecting the CPU throttling. Uh, and we've also got one standard rear exhaust, and these are running at fixed speeds of 12 volts. All testing took place at around 22.5 degrees ambient. We have left out comparison results from our regular cooler test rig because, as I said, they don't use the same case, but looking at the difference over ambient will give us a good approximation of relative performance. The best case scenario with the door open and 12 volt fans saw a result of 78 degrees, which may seem high, but it is in fact on par with the best results we've seen, which was with a custom water cooling setup using a D5 pump and a thicker 360 mm radiator. So a pretty good result. That said, all-in-one coolers with maximum fan speeds can reach within three to four degrees of this result as well. At seven volts, we're firmly in premium all-in-one cooler territory with 84 degrees, but the CPU is still nowhere near throttling. This is the optimal balance of noise and performance. At five volts, we get to over 90 degrees Celsius, but this is still a good result given the low noise output. With a less aggressive overclock or a less powerful CPU, five volts would be perfectly fine for long-term use, and this is really the advantage of water cooling in a nutshell. Whatever setup you use, you must make sure the airflow is good. Even at 12 volts, the door closed scenario sees the radiator completely suffocated and it's 5 degrees worse than the 5 volt result with the door open. With 5 volt fans and the door closed, the CPU actually begins to throttle before the end of the test after reaching its TJ Max temperature, so this setup is definitely not recommended. So to bring things to a close, we're pretty happy to recommend this kit from Thermaltake and we think it's a particularly good offering for anyone looking to take their first steps into hardline water cooling. The hardware that they give you is pretty good, it holds up to performance testing, and the value is also a pretty decent proposition. On that note of value, we made a price comparison earlier saying that it was £460 to buy everything separate compared to what you get in the kit. Now it wasn't entirely accurate because we were using a comparison relying on buying a D5 pump res combo as opposed to a DDC one like here, but that's because the DDC one is actually really quite difficult to find. Now, if you supplemented in a cheaper pump res combo to kind of make it a fairer comparison, you're still looking at around £400 for the kit bought separately, so £325 is a pretty decent saving. With all that said, we have just taken stock of one of EK's new classic kits, which is going to be a very similar comparison point to that. So I recommend that you hit subscribe, stay tuned for that review, leave us your feedback in the comments below, and otherwise, I'll see you next time.